I'm moving Sunday school on last Sunday, uh, and it went pretty well. Uh, we also are trying to test the Facebook system by streaming uh, this uh, service, this uh, not service, this um, uh, Sunday school lesson this morning. And uh, we have a very exciting lesson. If we can uh, open the word of prayer, we will get underway. Father, we do thank you for the opportunity to be here today. We are grateful to you for all of your blessing. We thank you for keeping us all last week until this very hour. We ask, oh Lord, that you would look upon us with favor. We remember those who are not here today and ask that you would lift them up. You know where they are. You know exactly what they stand in need of. We pray for those who would normally be here for the sick and dealing with the very storms of life. Lord, we ask that you would just provide comfort today. You would provide that measure of peace that they will know everything is going to be all right. Lord, we do thank you for the worship service today and pray that you would just bless us, not just right now, but all day long. In your name we do pray, amen. I want to look at our Sunday school lesson today and very good lesson. I've been enjoying this. I like this Old Testament stuff uh, because it just reminds us about the faithfulness of our God. And uh, based upon uh, the faithfulness of God, we have an opportunity to uh, know, have an idea to know what God will do based upon what he what has already done. And we use that measuring rod, that standard for everything else in our life. We go out and buy a pair of shoes that uh, have worn out and we can't replace the soles on them anymore because the last pair that we had like that uh, served us well. They were comfortable. They, we liked the way they made our feet look. Our feet look smaller in that particular shoe. There are a number of things that we experienced with that item that made us say, I'm going to do that one again. I got to get another one. I'm going to get the same guy. Car. People buy vehicles based upon the fact that, man, that was a good car. Carried me when it was even broke. It wasn't running right all of the time, but, you know, I got good service out of it. So we go back. We repeat. Uh, and when we look at what God has done, give us an idea as to what we can expect God to do. Because the Bible says God not flip-flop, wishy-washy, like everything else in your life that's not stable. God is stable, steadfast, steady, dependable. You can count on him to do what he says he will do. And so we look at the history, the Old Testament, and we get an idea of what God has already done. And that should encourage us to know what he will do. Will somebody please say amen? You know, based upon God's what? Track record. Yeah. Based upon what he has already demonstrated that he will do, will provide, will give to folk that ain't right. But try. That's most of us fit that category. Yeah. We, we, we struggling. We're doing the best we can. Well, we're not doing the best we can all the time, but we, we tell ourselves that we are. Yeah, we, we tell ourselves that we're doing the best we can do. And, uh, you know, based upon that, we, uh, uh, you know, just keep going in the direction we're heading in. And, and you really know, if you examine your heart, if you're really putting your best out there or not. And, uh, but what we see is God's faithfulness towards his people, his willingness that's a big word, willing. Whole lot of things would be different. People ain't willing. Things could be better across the board for everyone. People are not willing. But God is willing. He's willing, you know, and he demonstrates it uh, through the process of time and history. And we can learn from what uh, God has done. Understand that. We said last week in the lesson that... Uh, Joseph uh, dream, he, he dreamt dreams. He uh, you know, was given the ability to dream and had these visions, dreams. And he started dreaming at a fairly early age. I think he was about 16 years old in the state. And uh, he started dreaming at an early age and uh, he uh, you know, would 
let people know what he was dreaming. Sometimes you need to just hold some stuff back. Don't talk too much. You got to recognize by someone. You talk too much. You just <laughs> you talk. Yeah, sometimes it's good to just hold stuff kind of close to you. Yeah, so we told the brothers about the dream. The brothers got jealous, uh, got just tired of them, took all they could take, I guess. Anybody in here been in a relationship with someone like that? And you just took all that you could take. You could not stand anymore. Then you just let them have it one day. Well, his brothers put him in a pit, sold him into slavery. And so that started a downturn in his life. Went back and lied to the daddy about what happened to the boy. Now, the Sunday school lesson last week dealt with the fact that uh, Joseph was kind of messed up and corrupted. And like many of our own children, somebody please say amen, and get a little confused and twisted. We contribute to that. His father uh, had contributed to his downfall. You got 12 brothers and you're going to fool around and give one of them more than you give the others. Now, don't become confused. You know your children. All of them cannot handle all of the same responsibility all of the time, right or wrong. Right. Yeah, right or wrong. Yeah, that's right. So nothing new or unusual about, you know, yeah, this one can do that. Because I can trust him to do just what I say. You, nah, I'm looking at you and I can tell when I'm talking to you, you got your other plan working in your head. So you know your kids. But his daddy treated uh, him special in the eyes of the older children. And we have another story in the New Testament about sibling rivalry and jealousy. Anybody, you know, got an idea? What's another story about jealousy between brothers? Or sibling rivalry uh, that's in the New Testament. Prodigal son. That's the one. Prodigal son. Yeah, the prodigal son. The older boy stayed there and working. Said, wait a minute, now this guy came up, you gave him his slice up front. He left. Now he's coming back and we have a big blowout. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. When children perceive you're not treating them equally or fairly, it can cause a greater problem amongst them. Yeah. And they're not looking at the fact that maybe you know what you're doing because I gave this or did this for one, but not the same thing for the other. And then we also said that Joe's daddy also should have known that there was a problem or some conflict because uh, of his own personal situation. What was his own personal situation? No, just Joseph's father. Yeah. Esau, 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 and Isaac. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he had a twin. And he knew how he got it. They got along. And all he had gone through. Yeah. And so uh, what we have is, uh, you know, he had personal knowledge. And, and, and again, we have to be willing to. Uh, look at um, you know lessons we've learned in life and apply them to future situations. Maybe the reason why God took you to that particular thing and brought you through that is so you can learn something that you could now what use in your future, either to help you or to help someone else. And uh, we want to do that. So that's what we want to do. And uh, we want to. Um, um, uh, just keep those things in mind. Now we're not going to read the present day illustration. I hear a little noise coming out the Zoom and you know we're going to try to work with it as best we can but if people struggle with trying to keep their phone muted and uh, all kinds of other stuff and having conversations on that personal telephone then that will be something that we tried it didn't work out for us because Sunday school primarily is for those of us in India uh, and we can always take the service take the Sunday school and then put it online for anybody that really want to watch it, look at it, whatever. But you got to try to work technology. We want to try to make it work. We want to realize that the fact that we have this technology is a blessing and we can use it right now to serve the Lord. But let's, uh, we're not going to read the uh, present day illustration, but in our lesson today, uh, and I just set it up for you, you know, uh, Joseph, who has been cast into prison, uh, 
and we don't look at those scripture verses, but when you are at home and you read the Sunday school lesson, read the parts that the Sunday school lesson may not lift up. Sunday school lesson is not trying to get us to read the whole Bible at Sunday school. So read the other parts so that you will be able to fill in and have a complete understanding of the uh, story. So Joseph gets sold into prison. Uh, now he's been first sold into slavery by his brothers. His brothers sent him out, let him out to be a good servant. He's a servant. Uh, then he gets messed up because uh, Potiphar's wife uh, says that he, you know, touched her and he didn't. And so they put him in jail. Now he's in jail. And even while he's in jail, he still uh, endures mistreatment. Now, one of the things that happens throughout all of the things that he goes through is he has favor with God. Somebody please say amen. Yeah, he has favor with God. And we're going to discuss that again in a minute. And even though he's down here operating in the basement, because of God's favor, it could be a lot worse than what it is. Somebody please say amen. Yeah, but God's favor keeps him from being taken all the way out. Yeah, he's been taken all the way out. And so uh, we, we want to do that. So uh, question number one says, is obeying rules, regulations, and laws difficult for you? That's a personal question. Is obeying the rules, regulations, and laws, is that difficult? I'd say sometimes. Sometimes, okay. <laughs> what, you just don't like the rules. Sometimes you don't like the rules. Anybody here, don't, anybody here like all of the rules in life? Put your hand up. Yeah, okay, I was going to see if we had a real Christian in here. <laughs> I like all the rules all the time. <laughs> Whatever they tell me to do, I do it. <laughs> yeah, get a brain. So uh, what happens is, is that the uh, uh, truth is uh, it's difficult to obey all the rules, you know, and uh, we don't like to obey all the rules. And what we should realize, though, a lot depends and is riding on what the rule is and who made the rule. Now we know it's against the law of speed and running red light. And before they came up with traffic cameras and traffic lights, you might have been able to get away with it a little bit better. But now when the light turned yellow, I suggest you stop. Boy, when I was on my government job, people used to say, ah, the, the light was, they, they'd be saying all the time when they go to court, they say, uh, ah, the light was yellow. I said, okay. You yellow? You sure? Yeah, I'm sure it was yellow. Guess what the fine is for running the yellow light in the District of Columbia? It's the exact same fine as running the red light. <laughs> same money. So the person admitted that the light was yellow when they, they saw a yellow light and it went through. So you got to be careful. The rules. Now, the rules that we are called to obey come from God. Amen. Therefore, we are responsible and we should be wise enough, smart enough to know that what God says, you know, we should really be trying to do. So our rules come from God. Therefore, they are important for us to obey all of his rules. You know, now we may not see immediately what God is doing, but that's all right. God said it, that really should settle it. And it will be all right. Why? Because we can trust God. Yeah, yeah so we can trust God. Or at least we ought to feel like we can trust Him. And yeah, we should feel like God is not in it to hurt us. He's not trying to keep us back or deny us. Is that something people feel? Yeah, a lot of people do. So they think church is here to stop me from really enjoying myself in life. I could have a good time. I got too many rules. Too many restrictions, too many stipulations. How many of y'all going to the big game today? Philadelphia and uh, oh, that's right, they can't get people in. <laughs> Cowboys gonna be here in a few weeks. Long way we gonna be there. How many of y'all? If I was giving away tickets, you couldn't go. Amen. Uh, I don't have anything against football and that other stuff, but. Look at all the things we put in front of the commitment yeah. we supposedly had made to the Lord. Now we can't do those things. We're looking to God to help us get rid of this pandemic. Help us, please, Lord, 
work on the hearts of the people that's making the vaccine so they won't just throw some stuff out there for political purposes and kill half of us. We look into the law at that. Could it be that that could be part of God's plan all along? You gotta slow down and remember, you know, Second Chronicles 7, if my people, yeah, who are called by my name, yeah, will humble themselves, pray, seek my face. Yeah, still a pretty good idea today. Why are you more apt to obey someone else Someone that you love. Question number two. Because you don't want to hurt them. Anyone else? Or you know they, they got your best interest at heart. You know they have your best interest at heart. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually the reason. One, you want to, don't want to hurt someone that you really love. When you love someone, you should trust that person. Amen. And love and trust really kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. You love them, you trust them, and so. You, you understand that the relationship means they have the best interest at heart, and so you want to uh, you know, respond to them a certain way. Question three, why does being confident in God's love for you make it easier to be obedient to his command? Wow. What did you say, Brother Smith? Based on your past experience. Past experience is always good. We started off in our intro talking about the fact that looking at the past helps us to get some idea as to what we should do the next time we run into a similar situation. So past experience is good. What would you say, Sister Rona? What did I say? Because you trust him. Okay, because you trust him. He is absolutely positive trustworthy. What has God done to demonstrate his trust, his trustability? His trustworthiness. What has he done to demonstrate his trust, his trustability, his trustworthiness? What has he done? I don't mean he gave you, he made, gave you a new car, he gave you a job, he woke you up this morning, all that. But what else has he done? What has God done that flashes, you know, like a neon sign, like a firework in the sky that makes the statement that he's trustable? Okay, he brought you through your cancer. All right, you got all that. He brought you through cancer. He's done something else. He sent his only begotten son. Somebody ought to holler up in here. Yeah! Who in here this morning, either on stream or uh, if the Zoom is still, if the Facebook is still on, this is going on Facebook, who in here this morning would uh, give up their only child? Save a bunch of folk you don't even know. Some of them they ain't even trying to help themselves. Yeah. Who would sacrifice your only child for that? Yeah. yeah we'd be glad you don't have to. Why? Christ already died. Amen. Yeah. So we understand today that um, uh, Joseph now, his circumstances, you know, being sold into slavery by his brothers or family would do you. They will undo you. It hurts more when it's family. Yeah. yeah it hurts. There's more pain. I understand why you don't like me. Yeah, I got promoted and you still working where you are. Yeah, I understand why you don't like me. I got a new car or something that you don't have and, and you just jealous. I understand why you don't like me. I struggle to understand why we so vindictive and why my brother, my sister, my blood kin, yeah, why they want to undo me. See, I, I struggle with that. But nevertheless, all those circumstances were negative. He had these dreams and the difference in his dreams and other people that were able to do a little spooky, spooky stuff was his dreams came from God. God gave him the ability to dream, the ability to interpret the dream rested with God. And uh, you know, there were a lot of people around at the time that had a little power going on. See, some of y'all don't believe in Mama Kanji today. I believe Mama Kanji you know, got a little something going on. I don't understand it all because I'm not trying to concentrate on that. I'm reading what thus saith the law. Yeah, that's what I'm working with. Yeah. I'm holding on the greatest he that is in you. Yeah. Then he that is that's what I'm holding on. 
I'm, I'm holding on to no weapon formed against me will prosper. I'm believing God that what belongs to him is his and he can take care of it. That's what I'm working with. Yeah. See, but I don't, you know, somebody, the lady with reading tea leaves and all that, you know, I don't just dismiss it out of hand because there's a possibility that it might be something to that, but I'm not worried about it. Why? Because I know who I am. Who are you? I'm the Lord's child. Yeah. My Bible teaches me. That's why you got to read the Bible. You got to understand it. You got to come to Sunday school. You got to go to Bible class because it's like you walking around rich and don't know. You got stuff working for you in spite of you. And you don't realize it. It's like you standing in line waiting on a handout when you own the store or the building or whatever it is that is, is providing the handout. Yeah. And most of us ought to realize those kind of situations, uh, they usually have some stuff, you know, somewhere else with other people. <laughs> Say, no, that's where the work is right there. You know, the owners and the people at the top, ours is over here. <laughs> See, so you walking around because you don't really fully understand what you have in Christ Jesus by being his child. In order to be able to act on it, you got to know what you got, first of all. It's almost like I saw something on TV the other day. Someone went to one of these garage sales and they picked up a little something for $5. It was worth several millions of dollars. People go to those little sales and, why? Man, this grandma's house is at it. Uh, you know, we just, we just won't get rid of all this stuff. And today everybody's hustling. So we're going to just give it away to Goodwill or we're going to just... Uh, you know, just put a yard sale. And people come around looking at that stuff. They know the stuff and they know what they're looking for. You have it. Yeah, don't look. Pop and let it get away from you. Yeah. You got rid of that little thing because it looked like it doesn't have no chip on the side. Yeah. They got it back to the warehouse and man, this thing came from the Hunan Dynasty. I don't mean Hunan in the restaurant when they show the Chinese food. I mean, back, <laughs> you know. 1,500 years, years ago. Say, man, this thing worth several million dollars. What? And guess what? Then I'm going to come back to you and say, look here. <laughs> that thing I got that you all still last week. Yeah, I made about 20 million off it. Here's a couple thousand. No. They laughed all the way to the bank. Did a TV special. Tell them, look at here. We went to the yard sale. Them fools sold this. We got it for five bucks. Yeah. See, so you gotta be, gotta be, gotta be, gotta be, gotta be careful. All right, come on, let's read the first block of scripture. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dreams. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean ugly cows that came up afterward are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain, scorched by the east wind. They have seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. The reason the dreams was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. Ooh, yeah. 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 Boy, that's a powerful, powerful passage. Yeah. Come on, let's recap, recap uh, Joseph's situation at this point. Joseph was first sold to slavery by what? By the family, his brothers. After he sold to slavery, what happened to him? What happens after he sold to slavery? He ends up in jail, okay, uh, for something he didn't do, okay. After he gets put in jail, 
he has a, he finds favor in jail. In all situations he's in, even though they're negative, he still, you know, on the bottom, but, you know, it's as good as it can be. So from jail, okay, he interprets two dreams of other people who are also in jail. Now, and when people are where you are and you have a common bond, and he interpreted the dreams of the baker and the cup, make cup bearer for the Pharaoh. One of them was killed, one of them was released. And the one that was released said, look, remember me. Don't forget me when you get back, get set up again. I help you out. Two years later, Joseph is where? Still in jail. Yeah. The guy got out of jail, forgot all about Joseph. Then they, you know, only when the king had another problem did he remember. And I believe God called him to remember that. Somebody will holler up in here. You ought to be glad God does not forget about you. Yeah, he even cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. That's the way he forgives. See? Even after Joseph helped the two prisoners and they promised to not forget him, when they got set again, they do just what they said they wasn't going to do. And as a result, two more years, he's sitting in jail. Now, during all that time, Joseph could have felt what? How do you think he was feeling? Look at all the negative things that had happened to him in his life. Could have been feel like he was forgotten, most definitely. Some of y'all, because you didn't get whatever it is you asked for that was ridiculous request in the first place, you already ready to quit and give up on God. Somebody please say amen. Huh? Think about it. See, what you mean in my own situation? When I when the doctor said you got cancer, I never asked God one time. Why me? Why not you? What's so special about you that you don't deserve to go through a little something? See, it's why you're going through, you realize God is able to get you through. Somebody, please, amen. Yeah. You have your little pity party. See, you've forgotten about the one. You claim to love the Lord and serve him. And the same Lord you claim to love and serve is the one that not only created the world that we live in, but he sustains it. That's why the earth had not float off in that space. We don't have to wear moon shoes to keep to the ground because gravity is here. Now they come up with scientific stuff saying, well, we got to take care of those. We got to take you right because we don't have a no. And I don't know if God's going to trust us enough with a no. We mess this one up. So, you know, that's that's different. But we fall, fail, lay down, and don't get up. Joseph, all of these years, sold into slavery, made to be a servant, lied on, tossed in the jail, promised people was going to help him, nothing. But then one day, King has another problem, he has a dream, and none of his people are able to tell him what the dream is all about. Now, uh, there might be a reason why some of them were a little reluctant to get too deep into that. One, people don't like putting themselves on the firing line. Somebody please hear me. You made, you, you told the kid, King, I know the answer. And the answer don't come up right. You can forget about being wrong the second time. <laughs> say, oh no. So people are a little hesitant to speak up when you know their life might be on the line. Circumstances might not be their favor. Now if they can get credit for something they didn't do, that's different. But in a situation that might have dire circumstances, they're not gonna put themselves in the firing line too fast. Later on in the Sunday school lesson. Uh, the king and his advisors all agree 
Joseph is the one to take charge of the, the project. And some of them probably wouldn't want to touch him with a 10 foot pole. Why? Because if something went wrong, who are they going to blame? In life, then and now, when everything's going on right, people are with you. You just let a problem come up. Let some stink come up in the phone. Yeah. And people start having a way of distancing themselves. Man, they won't even take your phone call. <laughs> Who? Who's that? Our president is good at that. I didn't want to, you know. Yeah. I don't know, you know, man, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know that much about him. That was the date because he just got indicted by <laughs> for whatever. <laughs> you know, I only hire the best people. I hire good people. I hire extra people. I hire the best. But the minute they see, I say, who, who are they? <laughs> we, we get so much of that, you get a head spin, headache. <laughs> Flipping back and forth. Yeah, Trevor gave his dreams up. And the Bible says that he had the dream twice. And the reason why he had to dream twice, and uh, Joseph says, hey, because God be ready to do this thing right now. Yeah. See, he's going to move right now. We don't know how long it was between the time he first got the dream and he finally got around to getting Joseph. Somebody ought to hear me. Could have been a year, could have been two years. Whatever it was, time is running out. And Joseph put it into perspective. Wasn't afraid. Now, one reason why Joseph did not have to be afraid, he never, what did he have to lose? Yeah. He in prison. He already locked up in jail. Been denied his family and all everything. So, everything to lose, lose. So, he stops out there, jumps out there and does it. You know, um, uh, we just asked a question number four. Mm -hmm. The reason for the two dreams was because God was going to, uh, move quickly. Question number five, to what circumstances did Pharaoh um, dreams point? What was the circumstance of Pharaoh's dream? What did they point to? Seven years of prosperity and seven years yeah. of bad. And at the end of the seven years of good, it's going to be seven years of, you know, famine. Yeah. And look at verse 30. Verse 30 says, and there shall rise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. Boy, you're doing all right today. Now, you, you want to live for today. For that, you want to live in the moment, live for right now. But you really do want to keep an eye on tomorrow. You know, my dad used to dig work construction. And they knew that when it got too cold and snow was on the ground and other stuff, when like this day, they seemed to be, if they're working on a building project or building a building or a highway or road, they seemed to work year round now. But there are a few times in which they can't work because they got better equipment, better techniques, and all of that, I'm sure, goes into it. But basically, when the ground got too hard and some other things that happened, he, he wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And we had nine people in the house. Mm -hmm. My mother, father, and seven kids. And mama would can everything. Yeah. I mean, she can, she can everything. She can everything. Oprahs and tomatoes and apples and, you know, peaches and, you know, uh, uh, beans. I mean, they can everything. I remember she'd be born with mason jars and then you fill them up and put the caps on them and boil them again and cap seal them. She man, in the winter time, things got tough and people wasn't whatever. Yeah. Go in there and break out one of them jobs when you're eating fresh vegetables. Yeah. Anybody, anyone in here today know how, how to make or preserve? Uh, she does that now? Okay. Yeah. And again, you can go to the store and buy a bag of Jolly Green Giant and put in the freezer. Not quite the same. You know? If you, if you, um, if you vacuum seal, mm -hmm. Back and see him? That's technology working. Back and see him. No, no, the machine. The machine, yeah. yeah. Like Back and see preserve it. Yeah. Seal up that stuff as I do it all the time. See all the stuff you get just being the seller school? You can take yeah. it all summer long. I get my green. 
Yeah. Yeah. You put a back on it. Get the vacuum seal. I got a vacuum seal machine at home now. Sitting on the shelf in the in the uh, laundry room. I'm gonna pull that thing out when I go home. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, God, uh, hey, was giving him an opportunity. See, so that's what he was doing. Let's read the second block of scripture. Joe Luke's advice to Pharaoh. Now, anyone that may be watching us on uh, Facebook or live stream. Uh, you know, you can you, you have a Sunday school lesson, just read along with it. Okay. We stop, we'll stop, you'll be able to come back to it. Uh, so just keep doing like that. Also, anyone that's listening to me, if you have a question that you want to ask, anyone that's watching uh, remotely, uh, you put it in the chat, Sister Royal, uh, put it in the chat, Sister Royal can pose your questions. You have an opportunity to do that. All right, go ahead and read, read the blog. And now, let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. Pause, pause right there. Uh, let Pharaoh look for somebody smart enough, wise enough, to be in charge of this project. And note that even though Pharaoh was worshipped as a god, he's the top guy on the, on, the, on the food chain, you know, he still takes what? Advice. And as people around him to advise him. And that's what all leaders need to understand. They don't care where you are in the lineup, you know, you ought to be open to listen to somebody. Yeah, somebody can help you. Don't look past people. Joseph was coming out of jail, a convict, did not have anything stellar on his resume. But that's where the help is coming from. You know why? God. Okay, so Pharaoh asked them, Can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace, and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. All right, look back at verse 39. Read that again for us. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. Hmm. <laughs> or Pharaoh said, Since God, your God, has made all this known unto you. Man, I'm, it makes sense to me to give you, give you the job. But look at what's happening here. What's God's ultimate purpose? What is God's ultimate? Yeah, God made man have fellowship with him, uh, true. But what is God's ultimate purpose, his aim, his goal now? Turn all that bad that happened to Joseph into the good. Turn, yeah, for Joseph. But what about beyond Joseph? It's beyond Sunday school. What is God's ultimate purpose? What do you think God's ultimate purpose in the world today is? Was to live in peace? Yeah, do all that. But what, is, what else is God trying to do? God desires to make his name great. God wants to be lifted up. His name is already, but he wants his, us, we, his people, see, to make his name great, to recognize him and worship him for who he is and what he has done. Keep in mind back to when God called Abraham. Look, God's purpose is I'm going to do something. Here. Everybody worship every stick, every dog, every cat, every tree, every uh, brush, every little thing uh, is being lifted up. They're trying to get some credit for something. When I made heaven and earth and have sustained it, giving credit, God wants to lift his name, make his name great. And he wants his people to do it. Not to worship creation, but to worship the creator. And because of that, because of that, you know, God said, look okay, here, I can give Pharaoh a, a, an advanced crash course right now. And Pharaoh was able to recognize. Hey, and not only that, not only that, 
See, my Bible scholars will be able to pick this one up. What was the first person that was called to be a Jew? What was their name? Who was the first Jew? Abraham. First one, Father Abraham. Abraham and Sarah went down to Egypt. Well, we know it, in her 80s, Sarah was a fox. She was still a good looking woman. And Abraham said, Look at here, we get down there. If anybody in a uh, high position, anybody able to knock me off, start looking at you, then we're going to just say, You're my sister, not my wife. Because the quickest way to be able to legally possess a man's wife is to go ahead on, knock him in the head, kill him. Oh no, you ain't married no more. You a widow. You might as well come on, go home with me tonight. <laughs> you ain't got no more husband. I saw that last night, yesterday. <laughs> now you ain't got a husband. You might as well come on with me. I'm gonna be your husband now. <laughs> so, so Abraham did what? He 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 convinced Sarah that in order to protect me. Uh, and he did that because he didn't have the faith God wanted him to have. Eventually, he was going to have. He didn't believe God was going to trust him to do everything he said. He didn't just didn't wasn't seeing it, didn't believe it, wasn't feeling it. But when Pharaoh did see Sarah, he said, man, he asked one of the boys, man, who that? Go over there and get a number. <laughs> and invite her to the king's table. You know, man, who, 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 who that? Get her, tell her. Tell her, invite her over to the king's table. Yeah. And when the Pharaoh then, when Abraham took Sarah into, you know, his possession, boy, somebody gave it up. Said, look at here, that's actually that man's wife. And Pharaoh was upset. He said, okay, I'm gonna pay you and let you go. I'm gonna give you everything you came for and let you go. But I'm upset, he was ticked off. See, because the word is that your God is able to do a lot of things. And your God is watching over you. The word on the street is whoever blesses you is blessed. And whoever curses you is cursed. And I ain't going to take no chance. Go on, take, a, take this dollar. I'm going to pay you to take it. And, and God will go get out of here. That's what he did. And, and it continued. Now that Joseph's uh, son, a descendant of Abraham, is in Egypt under different circumstances. See? Under different circumstances. God's blessing. Somebody say blessing. Still in working. Still in effect. Yeah. Still working. And so God is able to you know, get a testimony out of this Pharaoh. Yeah. Your God is giving you, yeah, so since your God is, is the same God, remember Pharaoh's worship as God. Whole different system. But God's goal, ultimate goal, purpose is to demonstrate that he is and that the old folk used to say besides him there is no other. Yeah, he's still doing that today. And so, um, you know, uh, that, that's what he's trying to do here. And he's able to do that. So he was Pharaoh, who's worshipped and recognized as a God, puts Joseph in a position in which uh, he's second to him. That is an acknowledgement of Joseph's faith and of his God. Because uh, after, after everything Joseph been through up to this point, nowhere does he start blaming God. If he did, the Bible doesn't tell us. So we're going to stick with first. Nowhere does he blame God or does he fail to continue to have faith in God. That's what he does. You know. Now, what was the recommendation that Joseph made to King? Joseph said, hey, what did he say? Yeah, we got to find the right person to be in charge of because it's going to be seven years in which is party time. Then right after that, it's going to be seven years of hard time. And young people would do well today. 
to realize because you got it right now. Yeah, you may not have it always. And what you gonna do when you don't have it anymore? If you burn it all up, then it's, it's gone. It's gone. Every NFL, NBA, hockey player, baseball player, anybody else, they got it. There a lot of people die broke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you got it right now, but you may not have it always. Come on. Read the last block of scripture. Now, question seven said, What decision did Pharaoh make? He said, Well, look, I'm going to give you that. Mm -hmm. Nobody else probably wanted that job anyway. It was smart they wouldn't want it. Nobody said, We're going to get this guy a convict. We don't even know. <laughs> you know we're going to know this guy. Who is this guy? That's the one God put in place to be blessed. And guess what? You're going you to bless him. Fact. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go. Read the, read the next part of scripture. The bull ears. No. Uh, verse number 50. The bull the ears of famine came two sons who were born to Joseph by Asenon, daughter of Hadapi, priest of On. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It is because God has made me forget all my troubles and all my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim and said, It is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Okay. Yeah, got a question. It's just tight. Go ahead. Is that the same lady that I looked at that last night when I was doing lesson as, as a priest of dope. No, it's not the same okay. uh, person. It's not her husband. Her name was part of something. Yeah, it's not, it's not the same person. I can't do anymore. I did look at it yesterday and I, I anticipated that might come from this question, but I didn't do enough research to be able okay. to. But what it says is that uh, he is, this, this individual is a, a priest that did jump out at me. Uh, last night, uh, looking at the uh, uh, Sunday school lesson, and uh, um, you know, and we can, I can look at that, and get your response. I want to be one hundred percent accurate um, before I disseminate any information. And so, um, he is uh, now married, and uh, he has two boys. And the names of the boys, the commentary tells us reflect upon the fact that um, he no longer bitter or not harboring any ill will, any ill feelings towards his father's uh, family, his brothers, or his family because of what he names the boys. And you ask what's in the names, a lot of the names, uh, then and now. Uh, uh, name is, is important. And so the names of these two boys now, the interesting thing about this, and we discussed this in Bible study a little while ago, is that uh, Joseph's two boys, Ephraim and Manasseh, they become the two uh, families that make up the 12 tribes. Remember, Joseph, Jacob had 12 sons, but uh, when the children of Israel come out of Egypt at the end of this, um, the uh, tribes are established all 12 of Jacob's boys do not make up the 12 tribes. Two of the tribes are made up from Joseph's boys. Now, if it were different, then it would be 14 people altogether. But the way God orchestrated two of the tribes that will come out of Egypt at the end of this form into the nation of Israel. Two of them are Joseph's son, the tribe of Manasseh and the tribe of Ephraim, and uh, they are not only are they uh, Joseph's boys and not direct direct descendants, but they also have an Egyptian mother, which by the Jewish standard and tradition, uh, you're not a Jew, then you're a Gentile. And uh, they have a Gentile mother, and they have the same condition, same condition that the woman at the well uh, had. They were half breeds. You know, and you saw how the Jews hated them. Two of the 12 tribes 
were in the exact same situation as a Samaritan. And so sometimes the stuff we do is just crazy. And if we stop and think about it, it really wouldn't make any sense to us as well. Somebody look at Proverbs, the um, 16th chapter, verse number 7. Proverbs 16th chapter, verse number 7. Proverbs 16, verse number 7. Let me read it real quick. Proverbs 16, verse number 7. When a man's way is pleased the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Yeah. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies. Well, at the end of this story, when Jacob is finally reconciled to Jacob, when um, Joseph is finally reconciled to his family, his brothers, and they learn who he is and, and how he has forgiven them and all that. Boy, he's going to say some famous words that I, 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 I remember have sold into my soul and it might help you do the same thing. He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Yeah. Yeah, don't you think for one minute God's not able to take care of you? You know, I tried to tell somebody, and I said it in our desk of pastor just this past month. I said, hey, two things I try to do during this season of COVID, during this time of pandemic, I've been trying as hard as I know how to do two things. You know, one of those things, don't mess up anything. <laughs> keep it about God. Yeah. If I keep it about God, what I know, what do you know? Sister Smith, I know God is able to take care of this church. Somebody ought to holler up in here. And he don't need me to do it. Amen. But I'm glad to be one in the number. See, I know if I keep the focus on him, yeah, if I keep it about him and not let it become about some sideshow, amen, that he knows how to take care of his church. He doesn't need the CDC, doesn't have to check in the White House, doesn't need to get the quorum together up at the Congress. I believe that what he said, Matthew 11 chapter is true. Yeah, I will establish it. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's a powerful statement. Yeah. See, God is all powerful. And so therefore, he can do whatever he wants. Whenever he gets ready, however, or for how, however long he wants to do it. And when we start figuring that out, see, then uh, we'll be in better shape. And he'll be able to bless us even more. Keep the focus in the right place. And that's one of the things I've tried to do these 30 years as pastor. Coming up on 30th anniversary. I came here, I think, the last two Sundays in the month of September. The third Sunday in September was actually my first Sunday I was scheduled to be here. And uh, did not preach that Sunday because of uh, you had people coming to try out people invited to the pulpit to preach already. So, um, you know, for 30 years, the doors have stayed open because God, amen. amen. That's why one of our main mantras is the church <clears throat> empowered by the word of God. Another one that I use personally is the Lord, what rewards, what faithfulness. Yeah, just be faithful over a few things. Come on, let's finish this up. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, Jonas, Jonah and Erickson Tyler uh, in the uh, 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 closing out illustration. Uh, we're not going to read this. Question 9 says, have you come to God's love through a great hardship? Anybody here come to God's love through a great hardship? Yeah. Most, most, most of us, a lot of us, some of us, you know, and we want to pick it up right off the ground, amen, still, and don't want it to be moved. If, if left up to us, we want the low-hanging fruit. Why? It's the easiest to get to. We're going to have to get the ladder out and climb the tree and worry about falling. We don't want to work too hard. We want it to be right there. I use the slogan, you've heard me say it many times, if it was up to us, 
How many people, just be honest, if you really had a choice in doing it, if it really were possible, how many of us would just float to heaven on the clouds? I would. Yeah. I said, man, later for this. I'm, I'm gone. Hey. hey, somebody else can deal with all that. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah, we float to heaven on the clouds. We want the yellow brick road route. Right? That's, that's gold. Necessarily, we're going to chip off a few pieces of it so, so while we're on the way. Yeah, most of us will do that. And, and the truth of the matter, the fact of the matter, is that you know, God's got some pitfalls and some obstacles, and He allows, He doesn't put them there, but He allows them to be there. What we can gain from it is, ah, you know, Wine has that song out of me and then me. I was one of the ones that did it. Yeah. That's why I tell you all the time, they got a lot of bigger churches, a lot of places got a lot more going on. And a lot of times I wish I had another facility I could do a little bit more ministry. That's that and that's my reason for wanting. We could do some other things. Yeah. But uh, you know what? I'm thankful for the one I have and doing my best to keep the doors open. Yeah. Because in the end the Lord rewards faithfulness. Yeah. Question 10 says, why is giving up on God's love not the best option? Somebody see, hear me. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what hope is? What does hope mean? Hope is defined as the expectation of good. A person that's hopeless, hopeless situation, hopeless circumstances, that means they have no expectation of good. You might go and jump off the bridge. Go and shoot yourself in the head. Well, don't shoot yourself in the head. I got to be careful. You know, somebody might be looking at this remote and you took that out of context. Preacher said, go kill, go kill yourself. No, that ain't what I'm saying. But to be hopeless means that all hope is gone. Hope is the expectation of good. And if you are hopeless, means you don't expect any good. So you don't have anything to look forward to. You don't have anything that, you know, worth living for. That's a pretty desperate and sad situation. And we need to understand that. And what happens is, is that um, uh, when hope is gone, see, is life really worth living? So we want to keep our hope and we want to uh, not develop a situation of hopelessness, all these other things, by uh, giving up on the one guaranteed thing we got going for us. Yeah. God loves you so much, he already sent his son to take your place. Somebody hop. Yeah, you got that going for you, don't nobody love you. You feeling unloved? Okay. Yeah. But nobody loves you. See, God does love you. How much? This much. Plus some. And my arms really aren't big enough to be able to do all that. <clears throat> See, you, you got some options. You know, uh, you can decide to hold on and, and persevere knowing that uh, even though you don't understand why you got to go through what you're going through. If God is good, guess what? He's good when? All the time. Yeah. If he's merciful, he's merciful all of the time. I know you don't see it. I know you don't understand it. So what's new about that? Yeah, nothing new about that. That's where trust comes in. Trusting and obeying. This week we focused in on the lesson of Joseph before uh, Pharaoh. You know, what is evident to Pharaoh is, and his counselors and advisors, is that Joseph has a plan. And it has come as a result of his relationship with his God. What does your relationship with God say about you? How much are you really trusting him? Now, I don't mean try to set God up. You know, because you came to church Sunday and you remember the pastor's birthday and, you know, some other little thing. You think that you got the right to try God. 
Yeah, God's not going to co-sign your stuff. Yeah. Jesus said, if you ask, you know, according to God's will, yeah, then this is going to be a done deal. But God's already said, no, you're not going to trick God into saying, yeah. So, and you need to understand that. And you learn the difference and understand the difference in that by coming to Bible class, Sunday school, doing these other things. You know, some of us are so raggedy in terms of our faith, there's not enough evidence to convict us of being his child. Ouch. Yeah. We are so raggedy in what we believe, what we stand for. There's not enough evidence that we undercover Christians. Not enough evidence to convict us being guilty, being his servant. I'm not walking, talking about just walking around all day. Every other word out your mouth is praise the Lord, thank you, whatever, whatever, whatever. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about living for him in such a way that makes a firm statement about your faith in him, your trust in him. I'm talking about being willing to trust in him. When stuff really ain't going that good. Yeah. That Hebrew boy is kind of tough. Trust. Say, okay, live forever. You know, we don't want to take nothing away from you or anybody else, but we're not going to do this. We believe our God can protect us. And even if he chooses not to, we still going to serve him and not go bow down to him. Any questions on the lesson? Any questions on the lesson? Come on, let's close. Father, we thank you today for this lesson of faith. Being encouraged in a time of a pandemic. Lord, we ask your blessing upon us that you will keep us steadfast. Help us that we might have a real testimony that is demonstrated by the way we walk, by what we do, that we are indeed your child. Father, we thank you for the life, for the example of your servant Joseph, who stands before us today, encouraging us because of our faith in you. We know man will disappoint. We can't always trust our friends. You know, some of them are here today, gone tomorrow. But we believe you are able, ready and willing, and always have been. Bless today, all day long. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.